trying to think of a appropriate way to start this instigation. <laughs> Hey people, I'm Jake, I'm back on the Map Deck channel. I'm doing a bike build today with my brand new dirt jump bike. Um, I've got the NS Decade here and a load of parts behind me, as you can see. I'm just gonna get straight into the building process and get it built up. Got some of your grandma's finest lipstick that you use as carbon construction paste for um, assembling the seat posting. And now I've got some pink stuff all over everything. This is brilliant. You know what? We don't need that. Let's clamp her upside. All right. She'll get scratched at some point. Everyone's putting the bottom bracket straight in now. If you're really picky or, I mean, it's good to do. It's not really if you're picky, but it's good to face the bottom brackets, but I fly to Spain in the morning, so I ain't got time for that. Just chuck it in. Um, so I've got the Unite cranks here. Um, I'm just going to assemble one side so I can slide it through and then I can put the drive side on. Which way is the question? That way. Can I just make a point as well to everyone out there? Can we stop using Torx bolts? Thanks. You go mountain biking, your disc, disc comes loose, what do you do? Nowadays, you haven't need a torx gear or a bottom bracket tool. What? What was that about? And no one likes torx bolts. Like, who carries a torx gear around me? And if you do, then I don't want it. If anyone knows Pete Archer, this is his mountain bike tyre that he left here. It was, yes, it was once a Maxxis tyre. This is now my anti-crank spinning device. So the little adjuster on the back of these cranks, two and a half mm Allen key, loosen that. And if I, yes, I should be able to, should be able to wind this, which will put compression on. To the majority of people watching at home, or wherever you're watching from, that probably seems absolutely mental. Um, but when you're upside down, your bike's spinning round, and you're usually that foot forward, and then when you look at your pedals and they're like this, it's a bad day, so. Keeping them tight usually stops them from spinning. Let's chuck the pedals on. This is the, I don't know. I'm gonna guess this is the right side pedal. First debate of the comment section, do we like the colours? Silver and bronze. Yes or no? We want firm answers. In fact, no, I don't want firm, I want descriptions. We got these lovely Unite Components Renegade bars, a 35mm clamp diameter for that rigidity. Big words, big brain. Uh, they come standard at 800mm wide, but I don't like that. A lovely silver stem now. I don't know what I was doing. I do. Grease in the headset. So a lot of people probably haven't seen like this kind of straight double cable exit straight out the um, straight out the lever. Um, it's obviously for the gyro because you run two cables, one to each side, uh, to make it work. Um, but they do make like a two to one, so you are oh, a well, one to two technically. But I find that running running straight two cables up top, you just get a little bit less friction. I'm just chucking the rear brake on here. 
Um, I'm running an Avid BB7S road caliper. When you're running a uh, gyro on a mountain bike for anyone interested, you have to run a road caliper. So if you're wanting to put one on your, your bike, you have to buy a road and if you buy a mountain bike one, they don't work. To the cable fin and lubing process. Uh, I'm gonna chuck the wheels in now um, so I can actually set the brake up properly. So, the bike is all done as we can see. Oh well, not really. I don't have a chain, I do. But it doesn't fit because I'm not much of a beast. And I pedal so fast. <laughs> that, my, uh, my uh, rear chain ring is, what they say, uh, L ruined. So yeah, no chain, fly in the morning. I'm gonna go home and try and bodge something. But that's enough, because it's, Half nine at night, and I need to be in Glasgow tomorrow. Quite early. Not Glasgow? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. But yeah, I'm off to Spain. I hope you enjoyed that. Something a bit different from us. Now, I really like seeing Jake's videos because the attention to detail he puts into his dirt jump bike is insane. That whole little rubber thing behind the tires to stop the crank spinning while you're in the air. It, it blows my mind and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, what Jake didn't tell you in this video was that the reason he was there until half past nine at night building his new bike and flying out to Spain the next morning, he was competing in this uh, event called Old Maris Quino. It is a, a big urban festival, essentially, a massive celebration of like urban sports, but Jake was competing in the dirt jump um, finals, an FMB gold level contest, and had an interesting run in practice. Ahí ya tenemos, ya descendiendo. What is this dirt jump? Es el Erwin Perfecto a penales. I'll let Jake tell you about that over on his TikTok. Uh, very near-death experience. Um, and then had a fantastic qualifying run. Qualified up in seventh, which is superb, considering you know what he'd just gone through in practice. And, and then on finals day, put in a brilliant first run. I'm going to show you at the end of the video so you can see it for yourself. Um, astonishing. And then on his second run, when he knew how he had to up the game, unfortunately his bike malfunctioned. Enough to do with how Jake built it. It was a complete component uh, failure. Again, probably see more about that over on Jake's TikTok. But I'm gonna finish this video up by showing you Jake's final run. and just wanna say, yeah, well done Jake. That was an ep epic one. Well Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, comment about the debates, peace. Votes if I should go on Paul's podcast, I vote. I'll vote. That's two votes. And we've got 100% of everyone we've asked yet.